Hello everyone, I'm Zishan Shah and welcome to Z Interactive YouTube channel, your own training institute. So here I'm again with the new node and we will learn about the flood fill today. So flood fill to start with, let me show you around uh, what does the flood fill do. Actually, first thing you need to know, flood fill works with only one kind of input and that have to be black and white there should be no grayscale in between it have to be 100% black it have to be 100% white so 100% black and white so no grayscale or something like that now why do we use flood, uh, flood fill so flood fill are used for various reasons and we will see one by one for what reasons we can use the flood fill for so first think first how we can make a flood fill so first of all i have this trial generator here and i have this a normal tiles basically if you will see here okay so what i can do here is that i can uh plug this in the flood, uh, flood fill so the flood fill just right you have to sp uh, press space bar just type here flood fill and you can have a flood fill node and you can just uh, bring it here okay so that's what we have flood fill okay and already i have uh brought it here okay now in uh in the flood fill i will take the in output of the tile generator and plug it inside here as soon as i will do that you will notice we will get something like this but this is not what we want right now flood fill actually works with its own secondary nodes what are the f those secondary nodes so if i will press space bar here and just type the word flood okay or type the word flood here okay in the library and you will get all these flood fill nodes the nodes that works for the flood fill so you have all these nodes and each nodes have description if you will just you can re you can read those uh, more like uh, description over here if you want so i will use uh, these three rest you can check with these are the ones which i use a lot flood fill to random flood fill to position and flood fill to gradient okay so let's see if i uh, once you apply your uh, target into the flood fill so if you will take this and use it inside the flood fill to random what it will do is that it will randomly generate different sort of uh, kind of colors over here for your flood fill okay now what we can do here is that uh we don't have anything here so this is how you will more like get it so if you will go inside the flood fill here you won't have anything here as well so if you want to control you can add uh, like secondary things over here or just like that but it's all random so that's what we have here okay now if i will go and take this flood fill and plug it into the flood fill to position you will see it will create this sort of a uh, scale over here randomly generate with the gradient going just like that okay now if i will take this one output and put it in the grayscale conversion i can use it with any other thing next i have here is the flood fill to gradient so if i will plug it here and i have angle input and slope input also so that that we will see later now if i will go inside the flood fill to gradient you will see uh, that each one of these tiles have different sort of gradient okay this is all random so what flood will do is that it generates things randomly so for randomization this tool is heavily used now i can increase the uh, like variation for each one of these uh, tiles the uh, gradient variation will change i can use the multiply by bounding box size i can use uh, angle in uh, image input because I don't have it right now. Let's put it uh, here. So let's use a uh, gradient here. Or let's use for now Berlin noise and let's see how we get, what kind of result we get. So I will take the Berlin, uh, Berlin noise and I will increase a little bit so we can see the result clearly. And I'll put this inside the angle input now if i will go in the angle input and start increasing so you will see that it is following the gray 
the black and white of this uh, image and its angle input from here. Now, let's remove this, uh, like reduce this one. And now let's uh, take this and put it inside the slope input. And now let's see if I will increase the slope of it. So you will see the slope of the image is now taking up from the Perlin noise. Now, if I will go to the Perlin noise, scale it up or down so you can see that how this is affecting the image itself. Now, this will be more visible if you will increase this uh, these styles. But I hope you have got you got the idea now. Now, what you need to do next is that the blending you will do the blending now so if you will take this dial input put it inside the blend you will get this normal one now if i will take this flood fill random put it here okay and start changing opacity or something like that or uh, add or subtract okay so you can see these kind of results or what else you can do is that instead of background you can put this in the opacity. So whatever is white will be affected. Whatever is black will be accordingly affected. So it will generate this sort of a uh, node. Okay. Now, if I will leave this one and put this one inside, you will have this result. Okay. And if I will leave this in one, it's uh, beside and put this one, so will you will have this result. Okay. So this is how you will get these results out of it. And if I will take the whole thing, press shift, put it in the blend, so you will get this sort of a effect here. Okay. Now if I will go here and start reducing or increasing the opacity, you can see that what kind of result I'm getting here. Okay. Now this you will see some artifacts here because this is 8-bit, so I can go here in my uh, blend mode and output format I will make it absolute from 8 bit I will move to 16 bit to fix that now it's fine now if you can see I can use opacity to increase or decrease just like that one more thing you can do is uh, you can do that is maybe you can take this one instead of opacity you can also put in the background Okay, and now in the background also you can increase or decrease this opacity map here. You will get the same results. You can see how we are getting it some in and some out. Okay, and if I move this one and you will put this one in the opacity or in the back, uh, in the background too because we are just going to change this opacity type so here. Okay, so this is how you get the actual result here. Okay, so let's move this all back here and let's see what we can do it uh, for different, uh, what are the different purposes we can use this for. So let's press shift key, move everything here. Now, one thing that we can use this flood fill is for height variation. Now I have this dial uh, generator, I will take this one take the output, put it in the flood fill, okay? Now this have to go to the flood fill to random grayscale. This is the, this is that, so I will put it here, okay? And this one, I can take it to my background, okay? And go back here and make sure this one goes to the foreground. And now I can go back here in the opacity, I can reduce the opacity for the result I'm looking for. And you can see how it is generating different sort of uh, like the tiles option, like uh, height variations here. So this is one thing you can use this for. Let's move this here and let's see what else we have. Intensity mask. Shift key, move it all here. Now in the intensity mask, let's see how this works. So I will take this one my tile generator plug it in the flood fill i will take it from the flood fill put it in the flood fill to random gray then 
uh, I will take this flood filter from render, uh, random grade and put it in the opacity here. Okay. Now this tile generator, I will put it here on the uh, foreground. Okay. And then I have this uh, clouds. Basically, let's do one thing. Let's uh, put this tile generator in the background and the cloud or the, the cloud itself i will put it on the foreground okay so i will have now you can see this sort of result okay now how i'm getting this sort of result because whatever is white is showing 100 percent this and whatever is black is not showing anything from here just like that okay so if i Pin this one, take this. So just see black. This is showing, uh, th like th this isn't showing anything from the, uh, the clouds. Okay, this is uh, white. It is showing hundred percent from there. Okay, this is how the opacity actually works. Just like we have opacity nodes in Photoshop, op opacity mask. Same thing uh, like this, uh, like this way it works. But what if I, if I take these two? and swap them, okay? So the result will be uh, opposite of that. So I will have something like this, okay? Then maybe you can use a uh, hist uh, histogram scan in between just to lower down this effect. Maybe you don't want this to be uh, like a uh, like this intense. So for example, I will take histogram range, sorry, not scan, histogram range. I will take the histogram range, take everything from here, put it here. Okay, you can see I can reduce this effect. Okay. Or maybe you can also use level if you want. Instead of this, we can use level. And inside the levels, maybe I can change these settings to pull things down or up. This is how you can do that. Okay, let's put this. So I hope you have understood that we can use it for the intensity mask. Let's see uh, the pattern uh, breaker, how you can use with the pattern breaker. Shift, move all this to here. Okay, now tile generator, same thing we have, put in the flood fill, now from the flood fill, flood fill to random, okay, randomly we'll get this, then flood fill from render to directional warp, so if you remember, we have gone through the directional warp in our last lesson, so I will put this directional warp here, or uh, the, this random in the intensity, okay, then I will take this clouds, and I will take this clouds and put it inside the directional warp input. Now, if I will increase this to 50 or something like that, you can see randomly it is generating outwards. Okay. And one more thing here I can do is that I can increase the scale of these tiles so I don't get these uh, black uh, border. So that's all okay think I have increased it too much yeah Just that and make it one. That's fine. Okay. 
increase it more and now even more you can increase it something like that and if you want to increase this so randomly it is distributed now here what you can do is that you can blend it okay with uh, actual tiles Okay, or you can increase the capacity. So this is how the pattern uh, right now looks like. Okay, if we have not done this process, okay, without doing this uh, random tile generator, if I will go here, if I reduce the intensity or uh, to completely zero, so it will be normal. So normally it will look like this, so there will be no uh, variation. In it. But if I will increase it, you can see there is a variation, clear variation here. So this is how you can get the variation inside this. We also have done this in our uh, warp, uh, national warp exercise, some, something similar. Let's move this one. Take everything off here. Move it to the random mask. Now inside the random mask we have the same tiles here. I will put this here. Okay. And put this in the flood fill random. Okay. And then I have here uh scratches. Okay. Now here what I'm going to do is that I will take my output and put it in the background. Okay. And then I will take this normal uh sorry this uh, scratch generator and put it inside the foreground of the blend so you will see something like this right now but if i will go in the blending mode and choose the subtract so i will get this here but if you will notice this is applying everywhere and this is actually what i don't want i don't want this to apply everywhere so what i want to apply with the random generation. So I will take this output and put it in and, and I will put it inside the opacity. Now with the help of opacity, you will see that it is not applied anywhere here. Like uh, it will it's not applied in everywhere. It is applied on some values is applied here, some values darker here, somewhere here, somewhere here. So randomly it has applied it. So that's what we have here. So suppose if I will reduce the opacity of this, you can also see the result. But what if, how the result will look like without it? So if I will select this one and backspace, so you will see it's everywhere. Just notice. Okay, and if I will undo it, just notice now, if I will undo that and bring this connection back or put it here. Now you can see some, from some places it is gone, from some places it is there. So randomly you will see that. So random masking, you can use this flood fill for. Now let's put it here. Let's see some more tricks here. Okay. Now I have this uh, tile generator here. I'll put this in the flood fill. Okay. From flood fill, now I will put this into flood fill to gradient, which I showed you before. So I will get this sort of a uh, result here. Okay. But I will do this inside of like different kind of uh, angle variation. Do some angles from here. And the rest I will keep it as it is. I don't want to change this variation. I will just change it as much as uh, you like it. It's, it depends on you basically. Okay, and now I will take this one and put it inside the histogram. 
Okay, so I can control the histogram settings. Now you can see that with this, you don't have that boring uh, sort of tiles. It's all up and down, all up and down, these sort of things. So I can decrease or increase this, okay, so that I can have different sort of a like randomness, like a height here, okay. And what else I can do is that I can go back here and maybe reduce uh, square, okay. And change the size of the square to match this up. Yeah. Okay. So now you can see like a lot, well, like sort of like a broken uh, stuff here. It's, 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 looks like a tiles at the house but it's kind of broken it's somewhere going up or down or something like that so you would have this sort of like there's a like there is something going underneath and it, it's it made it look uh, worse just like that okay now keeping the same style the same way we can do something here with the cells so i will keep this flood fill the flood fill gradient the histogram and, and put it here, just like we have it here. We also have it here now. Now we'll go inside the cells, reduce the size of the cell. Okay, somewhere around five. I will disorder it as much as I can. Now I, uh, I cannot apply this one right now to flood fill. Why? Because I told you it have to be 100% black and white because there is a shade of gray, so this will not work correctly so i have to put this inside the edge detect so you all remember the edge detect that we have gone through so we will have black and white edges here so i can make this edge go just like this now i'll connect this to flood fill so i have this result here now i will put this inside the flood fill gradient i will have this angle variation okay Maybe you can do this or leave that. Okay, now I will put this inside my histogram scan. I will take everything from here and put it inside here. Now you can see we have this broken sort of tile here. Okay, like a brick. Uh, like you can say stone wall or something like that you can blend it with the grunge map or something like that to give a uh, little bit the like the sort of feeling that uh, this is broken and those kind of thing but that also we will do there is another um, like a plug a node we have which is called vector warp node so in that uh, with using that node we can create more interesting stuff so I hope uh, you got the idea uh, you have gone uh, you have got the idea about this uh, flood fill and you can do a lot of good things uh, like uh, like some cool things with it so if you know your own tricks and you have done it and uh, you, you you have been using that for a while and enjoying that so please share it with me also so I hope you have liked this lesson and I'm sure you will be waiting for the next lesson uh, our next lesson will be on the a vector warp node and which will uh, we will cover in detail in our next lesson i would like to thank you all for all your support and i hope you will continue to support me please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to my channel yet and i will be posting a lot of new content so don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can receive the notifications about them if you have liked my video so please hit the like button and leave your questions in the comment section below and i will surely answer them in the end i would like to mention that please watch all my videos online so that i can get some benefit out of it too if anyone will download my video so i my hard work won't pay off like this so please do support me always watch my videos online so thanks again everyone and soon we will meet in the next class Take care of yourself, stay healthy, and keep learning. There is one important announcement I would like to make. I have started three great membership plans on my channel. I have introduced ZDI Friends membership plan, which will give you exciting perks like loyalty badges and priority on comments. I have also introduced ZDI Early Bird plan, which will give 
access to Z interactive tutorials way early before they become public. So you will get all these lessons at once and you can binge watch. Last but not the least, I have introduced Zendai Premium Plan which will give access to advanced professional tutorials which you will find at very very expensive outside and I will be giving this at a very low amount of price. So visit my channel now and click on the join membership to get more information. I hope you become one of my members. If you want to learn how to create a highly detailed prop procedurally using Substance Designer, so this premium tutorial series is for you. Join my premium membership plan on YouTube and get access to all premium tutorials. In this tutorial series, I will demonstrate how to use Substance Designer along with simple geometry to create a realistic smashed up retro television.